views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, once again, everyone, welcome. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. And to start off today, we're going to be speaking about the energies of February. Now, the Posse of Angels wishes to remind all of us that the energies of February and how they are working for the betterment of ourselves. Like myself, um, many of my clients and friends have told me of their... um, the increase in their instant manifestations that have been happening uh, with with and for them for a while, but it's because of the result of this huge download of energies, the lunar eclipse, the solar eclipse, and opening us uh, more to our abilities to be able to be clear inside and to manifest Uh, things immediately on the outside. Now, what these instant manifestations is getting us ready for is no less than the next chapter of our lives. In a way, January's January's energies were a bit slow and many of many people had uh, flu-like ascension symptoms, but February has seen those energies slowly picking up pace and starting to bring us the big opportunities that will move us forward in March and April, not only to the fulfillment of our dreams and our wishes, but that'll move us into this year of mastery for the greatest growth of our soul, for the greatest way that we can be of service, not only to ourselves, but to others and to the planet. Now, the posse of angels, okay, they're showing me a rocket ship about to be launched, and they're saying that it's time of action. It's getting time to be thrust forward. And the great part is when we're presented with those synchronistic signs and messages that hold the fulfillment of our wishes, all we truly need to do is to step forward by saying yes. Um, I was interviewed yesterday on the Dr. Pat show, and we were speaking about mastering ourselves in 
2018, this year. And I was saying that if we're presented with something by God and the angels, all we need to do is step forward because the reason we're being presented with it is we can do it. We wouldn't be presented with it if we didn't have the capabilities, the abilities, the gifts, the talents to be able to do it. So all we need to do is have that faith and trust to step forward when we're called to do so. And when we do step up and forward, we will be creating those foundations that are special and unique to each one of us. Much of this past year was about valuing ourselves and getting truly clear on what was the truest and most heartfelt longings that we desired to come true. Now, the Posse of Angels is saying that if we are clear and have come home, this year is going to be no less than it's showtime for us to serve in all our glory. Many of us have been crystal clear about honoring and valuing our heartfelt dreams. We've stepped up when spirit has told us to create. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a blog, maybe it's a newsletter, maybe it's a YouTube, maybe it's a radio channel, maybe it's a number of things to compose that piece of music, to create that piece of art, who knows? But we've also valued ourselves, not only by nurturing our talents, by um, really uh, letting go of dishonoring people, dishonoring work, things that were just sapping our energies. And now that we've done that, we can step forward to be absolutely clear when we are presented with those things to move us forward. Now, there may be some of you out there, viewers and listeners, that are thinking to yourself, but what if I haven't done all the above? Do I miss out on the magic? Well, I can tell you, everyone, that life is not a race and it's not a competition, but it's the journey that does matter. And for that journey to be all that you possibly could desire, it is tantamount to focus on the above points to see whether they are, they are being addressed or not being addressed in your life about clearing negative emotions, bringing things into alignment, and, and really clearing your life of everything that is a compromise or is not honoring and respectful to who you are. For it's those energies of compromise and dishonor that will cloud and block the signs on how to advance to the fulfillment of your dreams. And even though we may not have cleared all our triggers and our reactive behaviors, well, the posse of angels, um, they're applauding each one of us for ta taking many important steps in order to do so. And so they're, they're really applauding each one of us, which, which kind of leads us to our third show in February today, which they have entitled Forgiveness Opens Doors of Magic. Now, remember, February's theme, with it being a Valentine's Day month, um, is about love. But love entails a lot of times forgiveness. And with the consciousness on the planet shifting, we certainly have seen many being able to close doors on the past and make enormous strides in the area of forgiveness. In many cases, it really truly doesn't matter how spiritual we are. Forgiving others can be a very diffi difficult area to address. But the Posse of Angels urges us to not look at forgive, to look, to actually look at forgiveness from an angel's perspective. You know, when it does come to forgiveness, the most important thing to remember is not what a person says or does or what they said in the past. The most important thing to remember is if that person is in your life, you contracted for them to be there. In fact, the road to forgiveness starts with taking responsibility for the appearance of everyone who is in your life. And not only did we contract for that soul to be in our lives, we chose 
their characteristics as well. And some of those characteristics were really contrasted by who we are. Now, the posse of angels knows that for many people, this is really hard to believe, especially if that person has abused you, if they were controlling, judgmental, if they were dishonoring, and basically if they'd done you wrong. But, you know, they're saying that you contracted that soul, that divine soul underneath their decisions and choices, and they're contrasting, sometimes controlling natures to push your buttons in order to push you to be authentic, to be independent, to empower you, to rail against them, and to, in many cases, speak up for yourself. Once we understand that we contracted for that person to be in our lives, then we can choose to accept responsibility for our part in what played out between us. Once we accept this responsibility and this accountability, there's no one to blame, there's no fault finding, and we cease to become a victim any longer. Now that we've chosen to accept responsibility, a choice to make. We can either choose to make ourselves right and the other person wrong. And we do this by replaying and rehashing the awful things that they did. Or we can simply choose to be happy and forgive. Now the posse of angels are assuring us that the recipe for forgiveness is taking responsibility and choosing to be happy over choosing to be right. And they're saying, yes, dear beloveds, it is that simple. By forgiving others, we in no way condone or tolerate or allow any disrespectful behavior. We're just choosing to stop the suffering of carrying and replaying the burden of unforgiveness anymore. We forgive for our own benefit as we truly can't control anyone else's actions or their choices that they make once we forgive them. Now, the Posse of Angels is reminding us that we forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because because it is we who deserve peace. And by choosing to forgive We set a prisoner free, and that prisoner is ourselves. And we realize that the prisoner that was held captive was ourselves. And we chose to remain imprisoned and captured all along by our perceptions and by our attitudes and our choice not to forgive. You know, there are many people who see forgiveness as a sign of weakness, when in actual fact, to quote Mahatma Gandhi, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Here come the posse of angels. They're chiming in and they're saying that unless we forgive others, we cannot fully put to rest the memory of any less than desirable relationships or events which may have occurred. They'll always be playing in the background. And that energy of disappointment, disheartenment, despair, blame, being a victim, that will, those energies will affect every other aspect of our lives. And by not finding closure with forgiveness, we then simply cannot move forward with our lives as we are caught in an endless loop, a constant carousel of blame and seeing ourselves as a victim. This perpetual reinforcement of negative energies keeps us attracting more negative energies to ourselves. Now, the Posse of Angels is adding that unforgiveness or not forgiving closes us down to being fully open to radiate the light-filled frequencies within that are necessary for the manifestation of our wishes and dreams. 
by not forgiving, we are closing off of that channel to receive that fulfillment of our prayers. Now, one of the most extraordinary stories that I experienced came as a direct result of taking responsibility responsibility, and forgiving another person. In 1998, after 22 years of experiencing abuse in my marriage. Now, when I speak about anything before of 2003, it was when the former soul of Claire Candy Hoff was in the body. And, um, and she had no self-worth, but I will use the word I, which is a bit confusing. I had, I had allowed myself back then to become anorexic, codependent, and controlled. When I finally built up enough courage to end this abusive marriage, I was so frail and I was so disempowered that I really did not have the emotional strength to fight my very powerful, very clever ex who was a lawyer. I basically let him set the terms for our financial agreement. He structured the settlement in such a way that the first part of the agreement would happen after a year, and then he would determine when the second part of the settlement would occur. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, how could she have possibly allowed this? But, you know, I can tell you, I was not awakened Um, The former soul was not awakened, and she was not the same person in the body that honors and respects herself today as Angel Ariel, thinking that after a lifetime of devotion and servitude to her husband and raising their two children, the second part of the financial settlement would certainly come in in a reasonable amount of time. So... She waited and she saw the end of 1999, the the end of the year 2000, 2001, and 2002 with absolutely no communication from her ex. He would not receive her phone calls or correspondence on the matter as he had been given free reign to structure the open terms of the agreement. It was at the beginning of 2003 that I was at the lowest point in my life physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And they say that when you are at your lowest, there is nowhere else but to look up. It was at this time that I decided to let go, and I allowed the grace of God to enter my life. I remember one evening that I had just finished meditating, and I felt this overwhelming compunction to, com- to, to compose a letter to my ex. Now, in my letter, I stated that I felt that it was about time that I told him how grateful and appreciative I was for the life of wealth and beautiful opportunities that his hard work had afforded myself and our I thanked him for the beautiful homes we lived in, the children's school tuitions that we could so easily afford, the wonderful international trips that we were able to take, and many forms of entertainment that we were privileged to take advantage of. I thanked him for his dedication to his work and the sacrifices that he made in order to provide for us. Now, in this letter, there were no, no, well, the I didn't do email back then. It was an actual letter. I stressed how grateful I was for his efforts, and I didn't write one word about his controlling emotional and mental abuse. Before I sent the letter off, I quietly called in my higher self. I also called in my ex's higher self. I acknowledged that I had written him in the contract of my life to help me learn my lessons. I thanked him for giving a part of his incarnation and playing a contrasting role so that I would really honor myself. I blessed him for exactly where he chose to be on his path of life. And then I released and I forgave him. I remember surrounding him in green healing light 
and then I sent him waves of pink clouds of unconditional love. Posting the letter the next day, I continued to forgive him in my daily meditations, and I sent him green healing light and the pink light of love. You know, everyone, it was one week later that I received a call out of the blue from my ex's lawyers saying that a considerable sum of money would be deposited in my bank account that afternoon. Now, was this merely coincidence? The posse of angels are shaking their heads and they're saying absolutely no. And they're saying that it simply comes down to the universal laws of cause and effect. Because the former soul of Claire Candy decided to lovingly forgive from her heart, she basically chose to live from that divine, eternal nature. And by doing so, she allowed the full measure and magic of the divine to enter her life. Now, in this case, forgiveness didn't alter the past, but it certainly enlarged the future. Now, another really important thing to remember when we are forgiving is rather than saying, I forgive you, please remember to please give me. The words, I forgive you, still apportion some sort of blame for another person, and it diminishes our accountability and co-creation in whatever happened between us by choosing to say, please forgive me even though we may not be able to truly fathom what we did in a certain situation, these words have a very different energy to I forgive you. And by uttering, please forgive me, it begins to lift our energies and allows for increased space to open to encourage more love to fill us. Now, the posse of angels is saying that everyone makes mistakes. And if we can't forgive others, we should not expect others to forgive us. And if you're having trouble forgiving, the posse of angels is reminding us to forgive others as quickly as we expect God to forgive us. You know, everyone, I wish you the blessings and they are truly blessings of forgiveness, which will then open all kinds of magical doors to open for us in 2018. Now, with the little time that we have left before we go to break, the Posse of Angels and I really do wish to to share our thoughts on the past two weeks and the remarkable Winter Olympics that we and many of us were able to witness. And yes, with the advances in technology, the advances in the precision equipment and training, there were attainments of spectacular performances from the athletes that may have been impossible to achieve in previous years. But these are not the performances that they're speaking about that made these winter games so memorable. For it was the human element that shone through the most. And the Posse of Angels is reminding us that it was no coincidence that the events of these games occurred in this monumental year of mastery and enlightenment in 2018. Now, let's first address what many thought near impossible, which was the coming together of North and South Korea. What an example they showed to the rest of the world. The unison that they showed was heartwarming. It broke down the walls of years and years of separation and division as they came together in harmony. This was extraordinary. In these games, we also saw gay men openly reveling in the fact that they could just be themselves, feeling liberated to put all their attention on their Olympic performance and not on shame and hiding who they are. In these Olympics, we saw so many examples of the tenacity of the human spirit. One in particular that really caught my attention 
was this, the German skater um, Aliona Sevchenko. She'd spent the last 16 years devoted to her faith and belief that she could attain a gold medal. And through those years, she had many changes of partners. But last week, in the pair's skating, she and her partner, Bruno Masso, received their gold medal. And we marveled at her will and determination to keep going, working towards her dream and never giving up. We saw many examples of athletes that were definitely there to compete. But when it came to camaraderie, there was no competition. And they cheered each other on and others, uh, others' uh, achievements of getting a medal, when they did not, they showed um, how proud they were of their, uh, their, their uh, in quotes, competition. Now, Michaela Schiffer, uh, she is a gold medal American downhill skier. She tweeted a great tweet earlier this week, and she said, it's not necessarily the medalists who get the most out of the Olympics. It's those who are willing to strip down to nothing and bare their soul for their love of what they do. That is so much greater than the achievement of a gold or a silver or a bronze. You know, we all want that carrot in life. We all want that medal, but not everyone will get one. Some are going to leave here feeling like heroes. Some will leave heartbroken and some will have had moments when they felt both because they care so much. You know, everyone, many of us watch the Olympics and it's the dedication of the athletes. It's their devotion. It's their commitment that inspires and motivates so many of us to dedicate ourselves as well. And we may not be Olympians, but May these examples inspire all of us to be master creators, master innovators who dedicate ourselves 100% to being of best service, not only to ourselves, but the world that we can be in whatever we choose to do. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio, which can be heard every week at Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on Transformation Talk Radio. When we come back, we'll be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings. If you want a free angel reading, you can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. See you soon. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716, or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Hello, 
everyone. You're back with me, Claire Candy Hoff on Angel Healing House Radio. Um, before we get to those callers, I, I for those free angel readings, I am so excited to announce that the audio book, the audio book for my uh, novel One True, uh, not sorry, well, I Am an Angelic Walk-In is now available on audible.com. So all you need to do is uh, join up an audible for free and uh, you can check out I Am an Angelic Walk-In. This is the story, my autobiography of Angel Ariel and how I came to be in the body of the former soul, Claire Candy Huff and with my walk-in experience of January 11th, 2003. It goes through Claire Candy Hoff's descent into uh, losing her light and uh, unconsciously asking myself to come in, to walk into the body, take over her responsibilities so that I could be of service to humanity. And she got to walk out of her pain and suffering, go home to God with honors. And, uh, and we are in contact still today as she is still across the veil. So once again, uh, very excited on com out the audio book. I am the narrator in this book, and I also narrate, of course, myself, Angel Ariel. And there are four other extraordinary uh, professional voiceover actors who do the other characters in the book as well. So do check that out on audible.com. Now let's go to those callers for those free angel readings. If you'd like a reading, please do call in on one 800 Nine three zero two eight one nine. Let's go first to Beth. Beth in beautiful Maui, Hawaii. How are you doing today? Hello, aloha, Angel. How are aloha. you? Aloha. How are the beautiful I'm energies of Maui? Oh gosh, they're delightful. It's just gorgeous here. It's heaven on earth. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I was calling because you were talking about, um, when you were talking about forgiveness, um, I had spoke to you several years ago. I was having an issue with my gallbladder, and it was about being hurt. And you said to me that um, being hurt is just wanting to be right. And that really hit so home for me that I was able to work on that and change my relationship with that person. And because of that, I have an amazing relationship with that person that I was able to clear that, clear, heal my gallbladder, everything. So forgiveness is just so powerful. And I just wanted to share that story because it was your message that came through that helped me to um, elevate that consciousness oh. around all that experience. Isn't that so beautiful? And it's in, and you know what? Uh, the Posse of Angels, um, and I've said this many times, you know, people say, oh, can't possibly forgive that person. Well, you know, when we get up in the morning, you know, we get out of bed and we think, oh, I'm going to have toast. And then we shower and then we go, oh, no, I'm going to have oatmeal. And then we putting on our clothes and said, no, I'm going to have pancakes. And then we go down the, go d walk down the stairs and we go, oh, no, I'm going to have eggs. And by the time we get to the kitchen, we go, oh, no, I'm going to have toast. So it's just that simple. We are human beings. We have free will and we can choose. And we can choose to put that energy of taking responsibility for having that person in our life. And even if we can't figure it out, we still have the choice of being happy and choosing that energy and bringing closure to that or being right and constantly rehashing. And we all know what that feels like, you know, <laughs> to constantly rehash. He should have done this. She should have done yeah. this. You know, it just is. It's so debilitating. And it just, it's a thief, and, and it steals our energy. Yes, and what was so powerful was that just recently I was even able to share that story with the person because they were having some physical problems, and I was explaining the emotional and mental contributors to that, and I used our relationship and, and my gallbladder as an example of um, how I was able to, through my forgiveness and through my own personal responsibility of where I was, to heal that. And I was able to share that story with him, 
even, and he was blown away because that story was about him. Oh my gosh, that that's huge. It's one thing to um, to do this in a, a quiet ritual where you say, "Please forgive me." It's like it's a, is it Hopopono prayer? Um, you know, I, uh-huh. I'm so, yes. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. It's one thing to do that in your quiet time, but it's another thing to say that in front of somebody else that that you did this for. That's huge. I know he was blown away too because he's a therapist and he was like, wow, that's huge. (laughs) (laughs) That's really huge. So I'm so glad. So what's the part you want me to know? (laughs) Yes, I'm I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling. Let me see. Uh, (laughs) Oh, they're saying... They're saying that um, this trip, this trip for you um, is very different. And the reason why it's very different is because you're allowing yourself to really not only integrate, but you're allowing yourself to open, uh, to receive a lot of the healing energies on the island. They're saying before this, um, you were excited to go. You're excited to do different things. Now you are. It now they're showing a different um, uh, approach to this, and you may not even be realizing this. You're taking more time out to sit. You're taking more time to actually um, be in the present moment, to revel in the energies. Um, and as a result of this, uh, you're really processing a great deal um, and getting more, more out of the healing energies than you did before. I don't know if you're feeling this. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Well, it's interesting because even yesterday I said we, I was just just being, and it just felt so nice to just be and enjoy the view and just sit and just be, and it just I felt really joyous and we didn't even do anything (laughs) well that's what that's what they were showing me they were showing me you sitting looking at this view but it's almost that you're seeing it for the first time that's what they were saying other times you would glance at it or other things would be replaying in your mind or going over and over and over again but now you're seeing it with with uh, just being in the nanosecond of the now, you're seeing it with clarity, yes. and it's it's just it makes you weep. It makes me feel like crying. Yes. Um, exactly. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Your first card that came out for you, and I always forget I'm on Facebook Live, um, is the sweetness card. This is in this cute little Mm -hmm. deck, the Victorian tarot cards, um, or the fairy cards, Uh, this woman is sitting in front of a beehive. And the bee, yes, it's the strength, the strength card to allow yourself to just be. They're saying you are allowing yourself to just be, and you're also getting the sweetness out of life. Because you've come home Mm -hmm. to yourself and, and you honor and you respect yourself now, um, that sweetness is is all around you, and you are very, very cognizant of it. The next card coming out for you is the world card, and I'm really not surprised. I'm really not surprised. The world is your oyster. Whatever, whatever you can imagine is yours, and they're showing the little fairies dancing in a circle. Um, in many ways, this trip is about, um, and they want you to do actively do this. They want you to uh, do a little bit of a ritual, a mantra, whether you go down to the beach and you put your toes in the water and you say, um, this is the end of, um, or the completion, not the end. This is the completion of a long journey that I've been on of mastery and I have now mastered myself. And, uh, and it's a new beginning as well. So you're going to be stepping off in March uh, onwards to opening up to, uh, to experience 
other other ways or different platforms on which you can present your mastery to the world. Great cards. And by the way, both of those cards are major arcana cards. And the next one is the Knight of Spring. And the Knight of Spring is the Knight of Wands, little fairy riding on a rabbit and uh, things happening very fast. Uh, this is a card of movement. It's the card of travel. Um, but it's also the card uh, being rods and wands of of maybe perhaps opportunities coming in for you for um, a new career or a new a new way of doing things um, that you're going to be very surprised with. Um, and uh, the Posse of Angels are saying, you can do this, Beth. They're saying, you can do this and, uh, and to just step forward and to open up to it. So I hope all that's been helpful for you. Mm, it was beautiful. Thank you so much. You're so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So much You're appreciate welcome. everything. You're so welcome. Sending lots of love and say hi to the whales and the dolphins. I will. I'll call them in for you today. I'm sending lots of love to you, okay. too. Thank you so much, love. Love you, too. Let's go to our next caller. We have Stephanie in New York going from Maui to New York. Each one of them have their incredible energies. As uh, the former soul was born in New York, I have her mental imprint. So there's a lot of New York still in Angel Ariel. So hi, Stephanie. How are you today? Hi. <laughs> Good thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you doing? Um, well, the sun is out here. It's, it's we're getting a, a warm spell, which is nice. Um, oh, that is nice. I've uh, I have a, a continual running um, a weather report with my mom being in Silver Spring, Maryland, and she hates the weather. So every time it's, I said, "Mom, don't say the word hate." I said, "You know, there's no <laughs> bad, there's there's no bad weather. There's, there's just bad um, clothing choices." I, I said, "Weather is not good or bad. <laughs> weather is not good or bad." Yeah, I said, it is. It is what it is. I know. I know. I mean, I do get happier when the sun is out, but I spent a year in Scotland um, when I was in school and had an amazing time and met beautiful, loving, thoughtful people. And so I don't understand why people complain about the rain because it kind of <laughs> reminds me of Scotland and happy times. <laughs> and it's just, you no, know, you can associate it with different things, you know, Absolutely. or, or want to go inward more, like read a book, take a bath, drink some tea, just, you know, be more quiet. You don't, you know, it doesn't have to be bad. Like all, of, yeah. But I do enjoy when the sun is, is pouring in, especially because I don't have very good lighting in my apartment, so it helps. <laughs> yeah, well, we do, you know, the the sun is that life force that, uh, that um, you know, sort of, it, it mirrors that, that radiance inside of ourselves and we warm to it and, you know, you know, we put our face up to it and, uh, you know, so not to say that, you know, the rain is bad because the rain nourishes, the rain gives the plants a, a, nice, a nice drink and, uh you know, it just shows that, yeah, in order to have the flowers, we need both the sun and the rain. So, anyway. So. Exactly. I totally yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a few different things that were on my mind, but I thought maybe I would just uh, also just leave it open and, you know, hear what what they have to say. Um, okay. Oh, wait. Come actually, on. okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, did did you want to ask a question? Well, also, yeah, it's funny. As soon as I said that, although I had decided before to just leave it open. So I think I have another appointment with a gynecologist on Monday. And I didn't have a very good experience when they tried to do a biopsy in the office because I've mm -hmm. been, you know, I've been having these problems with, my period, it's not that I have an issue with having a period at all. I know that there's wonderful things, but, you know, things have been off off for over a year. Um, right. And some things in my sonogram showed some things that could 
be signs of a cancer, you know, scary stuff. But mm-hmm. I also felt like I had a strong resistance or a strong no feeling about going into the OR. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but things, and I'm hoping that things could sort of shift or heal naturally, you know, if I make changes, although I'm not sure exactly if I know all of them. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to be irresponsible, you know, so I'm, I've right. been kind of struggling with that for a while. So I think maybe when I've asked about that in the past, I wasn't very clear. So I'm also a little nervous about then going back and seeing her because I don't know if she's going to push for that or refuse to work with me if I don't do that. But, um, and I don't know if that was my body telling me no, because it's already had so much with anesthesia and other drugs for my last two surgeries. And because right. my period, uh, became off after my last surgery. Right. Um, and if it's just my liver and gallbladder and all of those just need to heal and recover, or if it's just my fear and trauma, you know, I'm not really sure what the no was about. Um, well, so, they're saying they're saying that they applaud you for um, for being diligent with your health. Uh, they're saying also you have not l- really left any stone unturned, um, and you're being diligent when you need to be. Um, and then um, and then, but you're also cautious because some person might have an agenda. Uh, to only go one way uh, when, you know, your intuition might be telling you to go uh, a different way. So they're saying, they're showing me you covering all of your bases. Um, and, uh, and yes, some of that, some of that may be a- about fear, but uh, you would rather err on being cautious than not being cautious. So I think that's, that's really important as well. So let's go to the cards and see what comes out. So are they saying it's good, like, that I'm, list- I'm listening, it's not a fear, I'm just listening when I get that, no? Yes, yes. Please do listen, because you are very clear now. You're very clear now uh, as to whether it's um, not now. And not, not now doesn't mean not ever, but... You could get a not now, and then I will, by honoring that, you know, you uh, you're honoring yourself, and um, and you're not, um, you know, sort of adhering to just somebody else's agenda. So the first card that's coming out for you is the Ace of Wands. Um, this is a new beginning. They're saying um, you're going through a tremendous clearing process with all of this, and what is going to continue to help it is you affirming every single day, "I love my body. My body is strong. My body is perfect, just the way it is. It's doing an amazing job." And they're showing me um, you putting your hands on your stomach and going around clockwise, going around and clockwise and rubbing your stomach and patting yourself and saying, my body is doing a wonderful job. I am. I love my body. It's healthy. It's strong. And then visualizing yourself as healthy and strong. Um, but they're saying uh, that uh, come the spring – Come the spring, there's going to be a new, um, it's not going to be having a whole new body, but that's what you're working towards as you're going towards the springtime. My gosh, Stephanie, you got two aces in a row. That really is pretty powerful. You got the ace of wands which is a new opportunity. Usually that's a new opportunity, you know, work-wise, business-wise, an opportunity, or, and the ace of swords. And the Ace of Swords is this mental clarity, you know. Um, sometimes it could it could be in um, communication, communication coming in um, to uh, to give you um, idea and a sign and message of when to step forward. So uh, this is um, because you asked, and this is concerning mostly about your health. This is definitely a sign that there you've 
that they're saying that you've turned a corner and that they're uh, that you are rebuilding and there's going to be this newness as you go towards the spring and the four of cups the four of cups is all about relaxation it's about meditation <laughs> it's it's about taking yourself to nature I don't know in uh, in where you are um, if there are any parks nearby, but uh, I know it's pretty cold. Um, but you can always uh, do this through meditation, and uh, and and take yourself walking in nature when you close your eyes, and um, and you can be anywhere that you want to be. So they're saying that the more that you do that and visualize yourself, close your eyes, see your organs working properly. You know, see uh, all that all that female plumbing department working in co- in complete sync and beautiful order. They want you to do that. They want you to take the time out to visualize yourself whole, and healthy, and everything working in divine order. So the show's just about up. So I'm going to have to uh, leave it there. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for calling in. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye. And that just about wraps the show up for today. Everyone, please do remember my I Angelic Walk-In, which is the sequel to One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, (laughs) is now available in the audio book on audible.com. So all you need to do is go on audible.com, sign up for free, and then check out I Am an Angelic Walk-In. And and if you want to uh, purchase those books in their print form, you can always go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. And on there, there's also my meditation CD and uh, also my services. So everyone, until next week, Please do allow your radiant light to shine forth. Go out and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. Each one of us is like an Olympiad every single day. We get up. We do the best that we can with kindness and love. And when we choose these, acceptance and unity, it's amazing how that will reflect on our reality. And we will create a heaven on earth for ourselves and others and for the planet. So love and especially angel blessings to you all. And I can't wait to speak to you again next week. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.